The public consultation process for the proposed Trans Mountain Pipeline by Kinder Morgan has been ongoing all this week. As I told you earlier, the Dogwood Initiative has been stacking the rooms with speakers prepped in what to say. So I was really excited when my buddy and friend of the network, Bernard the Roughneck, decided he wanted to testify before the panel. His very passionate speech was just over 16 minutes long, and you can find the link to my Periscope broadcast below. I pulled out some of the highlights for you. So now, once again, Bernard the Roughneck. Overalls right now, because uh, two years ago these coveralls in the daily would get covered in Alberta gold. Now they get covered in concrete dust, and I make a wage probably 30 to 35 percent of what I formerly made in Alberta. So before I begin speaking, I just hope that um, you know I've listened respectfully to all of you. I haven't snickered, I haven't sh rolled my eyes, shook my head, I haven't interrupted. So I'd I'd hope that you'd afford me that same respect as I speak to you now here. Um, and I want to come at you guys with facts, not rhetoric, not emotions, just plain facts. And I'd also like to talk about social license because I think the oil industry in Canada, including Kinder Morgan, through their efforts to consult with the public, to consult with Indigenous peoples, to consult with stakeholders, to consult with local municipal federal governments, they've done a lot of work and they want to build you a world-class pipeline that's the safest pipeline possible. And um, they talk about social license. Now in Alberta we have a new government, Rachel Notley with the Alberta NDP, and we've announced that we are introducing a carbon tax. And actually, Alberta was the first jurisdiction in North America to introduce uh, a price on emissions. Now there is a meeting with the Alberta government between four main oil sands companies, CNRL, Suncor, Shell, and Snovis, along with environmental groups such as the Pembina Institute, and it was agreed that they would limit emissions to 100 megatons a year from the current 70. I kind of think something's fishy because it's freezing out growth and production of junior and mid-sized Canadian companies. It's at their expense that these larger companies are getting their foothold in to take up this additional 30 million megatons a year. But that's where it's being capped. So we've done a lot of stuff here to try to solicit goodwill, to try to convince the public but we have a problem getting our message out. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter because Obama kills Keystone XL. Trudeau says tanker traffic's banned on the Pacific Coast, except for Alaskan tankers that currently already are going by. And no limits on barges, you know, things that are transporting fuel, other things that are coming in that sea. It's ridiculous. I see most of the people talking about environmentalism. They're old, white, rich people owning condos and a condo that costs a million dollars for a guy like me, a young guy. How am I supposed to pay a million dollars and get a home? And these people have nothing to do, nothing better to do. They're all retirees, retired teachers, you know, people who love kayaking and stuff. And they come down here and want to rag on people like me who just want a job. I want to go back to work. I miss Rig 45. I miss my tool push. I miss my driller. And it's incredibly frustrating that there is no alternative for me. We're being told essentially that the blue collar in this country means nothing to you. And it's unfortunate because usually in the blue collar, we're not as rhetorically flourished or um, we, we're not, we don't come from these ivory towers of academia. We're people who got kids to raise, we're people who got jobs to go to. So we don't come to stuff like this and we don't hear any representation on what the people actually want. But I just don't believe that people are hearing the right thing because we live in a city where we got a, ba a mayor who bites to work with chain lube, uh, brake pads, uh, brake handles, tires, all made from petroleum in new bike lanes made from bitumen, which is used in paving, uh, standing against this. And this gentleman used to be a part of Tides Canada. So I think that's a little bit of a conflict of interest. I want to say as well that I think that this is not a sham. I have respect and I really appreciate you guys coming here to listen to me today. And I think this process is legitimate. But you have people who had never agreed to work with you or collaborate no matter what you offer to them. It's no, no, no. These are these leap manifesto yahoos. These people who say no more expansion of anything, but go home to heated houses and eat avocados in December. They're trucked in from overseas. These people use uh, natural resources. These people riding kayaks complaining about tankers, but a kayak made with polyurethane from petroleum. So what I'm saying is if we are going to use petroleum, why do we not support products here in Canada that support Canadian workers? Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.